Released on March 31st, 1999 for PC and April 30th, 1999 for the PlayStation, we have Grand Theft Auto London 1961 and Grand Theft Auto London 1969. Developed by DMA Design and Tarantula Studios, now Rockstar North and Rockstar Lincoln respectively, both London 1961 and London 1969 were released as an expansion of sorts to Grand Theft Auto, the review you can catch here by my co-host 16bit. While London 1969 was available on both PC and PlayStation, London 1961 was released on the 1st of June 1999 exclusively for PC as a free mission pack. However, London 1961 required London 1969 to run, which in turn needed Grand Theft Auto to run. Unlike Grand Theft Auto, which is set in the fictional cities of Liberty City, Vice City and San Andreas, London 1961 and 1969, as the name implies, is set in London. This marks the first and only Grand Theft Auto game to take place outside the US in a real-life location. Much like Grand Theft Auto, you select one of several characters which you can rename, yet all share the same appearance, and embark on missions. London 1961 adds minor revisions to the game's content such as drive-by shootings, replacing some vehicles, and the ability to pick up speed upgrades to your vehicles to name a few. To add to the setting, London 1961 and 1969 utilises a lot of British Cockney slang and, of course, driving on the left side of the road. But is the game any good? Find out in... The Good. Personally, I'm quite fond of the London setting. There was even a lot of care taken to give the game a British twist, and it's even to the point where they changed the text from busted and wasted to British terms, your nicked and your brown bread. The text you read when you accept missions also reflect this as well, which to me really builds the setting and sets the mood. Like Grand Theft Auto, the game has a very big open world that you can wreak havoc in. You can choose to take on the missions assigned to you, or do what a lot of people traditionally do in Grand Theft Auto. Go around and destroy everything that moves. Whether you pass or fail a mission, there's no consequence and you can take another at your own leisure. As you complete missions, you gain a multiplier which adds to the amount of points received from causing havoc, and can be used to utilise some of the services such as the pan spray or mod shop which will install a bomb in your vehicle. When you're ready to proceed, you're treated to a short cutscene before starting up the next chapter. The game also utilises cheats as well which can be accessed by changing your character's name. These cheats can range from having no police, to starting with a 10 times multiplier or pressing a button to obtain all weapons, which are very much the same as the ones you get in Grand Theft Auto. However, much like Grand Theft Auto, the game also has its own share of problems which we'll discover in the bad. London 1961 is the biggest culprit here when it comes to most of these problems. The mission content to me was very brutal compared to 1969, as all of the missions required you to reach certain places within a very short period of time. With no in-game map and an arrow giving you a vague idea on where to go, this can get incredibly frustrating and whether you get there in time is all based on how well you drive, as well as how lucky you are against traffic. While I do like the addition of drive-by shootings, it would have been great if it actually worked properly. In this particular mission, you can see my bullet go right through the guy I'm supposed to kill, who proceeds to then escape and fail the mission for me. Also, to recap on 16-bit's issues with Grand Theft Auto, the same issues are still present here. With the aforementioned lack of in-game map and having the vague arrow guide you in the general direction, the game also has very dated controls. This also doesn't fix the terrible aiming, and I found that I had much better luck with the machine gun than just about any other weapon in the game. The zooming map makes an unwelcome return which I found disorientating at times, and combined with how fast some of the vehicles are and the poor controls, I found myself crashing more often than anything. On the plus side, I don't have to worry about jumping broken bridges. You do get to jump off a rooftop on a bike though, which I guess is pretty cool. Aside from that, I don't have much to cover here, so I guess it's time I give out... The Opinion While I do like the British twist London 1961 and London 1969 brought to the table, a British twist to Grand Theft Auto is all it really is at the end of the day. London 1961 does bring drive-by shootings, but I feel that that was the only real redeeming factor of the expansion. If you've played Grand Theft Auto and had fun with it, the London 1969 expansion is well worth playing, but I probably wouldn't worry too much about London 1961. However, 1961 is free, so if you have the game on PC, it never hurts to have a look at it. So with that, it's time for my rating. Out of 10. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next Infinite Backlog Review.